as well. Stand with me if you're able. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to start reading in verse 8 and uh, down through verse 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, the scripture there says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, talking about Jesus, he led captivity captive, and look at this, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, <clears throat> excuse me, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Lord, thank you, God, for your word today. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us uh, through every teacher and every student in the building today. Speak to all of us, Lord, because we're all students. We all desire to be disciples of Christ. And so I pray that the word of God would uh, be illuminated again into our hearts this morning that we would have a greater understanding of these things and how the kingdom of God works and how a disciple can grow. And I pray that your blessings would be upon us during the time of the word. We'll praise you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. God bless you. Well, of course, we all know that uh, school is beginning uh, this week, and uh, so we pray over all of our schools and all of our teachers, all of our students, and uh, the last school year, uh, well, actually a school year and a half of a school year, has been, um, has been a challenge. But really, you know, uh, even though it may have been a challenge like none other, Life is filled with challenges, uh, whether it is the ministry of a church, the ministry of a school, uh, a marriage, uh, bringing up children, uh, dealing with your own finances in your lifetime, uh, all types of things happen and challenges come and go, right? So uh, really, um, human beings, right, Even especially children of God, uh, we are to be resilient, and we are. We can, we can overcome anything. We can face any challenge that we have that come against us. No matter how big the challenge is, the challenge can be a giant like Goliath. It doesn't matter how big the challenge is, how complicated the challenge is. We know that we are made overcomers by Jesus Christ. And so as long as we are serving the Lord and putting Him first... We can dive into every promise that is in the Word of God to help us to know, hey, well, none of sometimes challenges are very uncomfortable. Sometimes we don't like challenges, right? Don't you like it, those uh, the times when it just seems like everything is going good? Uh, oftentimes, though, those times don't seem like they last very long, does it? Because it seems like everything can go really good and go, oh. Left turn, what happened? And so, uh, you know, we go through things like that, but thank God we have someone with us continually. We have someone walking with us, talking with us, guiding and directing us in every aspect of our lives. And so uh, we can face the challenge. And so school administrators, teachers, and students, and parents, they, they've went through a difficult time this past year. And uh, But this is not something new. So we pray today <coughs> for them and uh, for them all. And we continue to pray uh, so that this school year would be a fantastic school year. And so thinking about all of that and the time of year that it is, I immediately went to Ephesians chapter 4 for our text today. Because when I think of teachers especially those in a Christian school. This is not just school teachers and students today. 
but even teachers of the word of God, whether they're teaching from this pulpit or they're teaching in a classroom or they're teaching in Sunday school or discipleship time, they are teachers uh, that God has given us and teachers teaching and loving people to make an impact in their lives. And so having this theme, I immediately went to Ephesians chapter 4. And here in this chapter, especially in our text, the Apostle Paul is giving some explanation of how God works in the lives of human beings and how he gets human beings to do his work. You know, it's God has always used men and women to minister to other people. Men and women, boys and girls. God has always designed it to be so and, uh, and to be able to use people as vessels, as a, using the church as a vehicle to move the gospel, take the gospel, take the teaching of the word of God and to touch the lives of the people around us and to whom we are ministering. And so uh, he is explaining the work of God in our lives here. And look what he says. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. This is what is referred to as the fivefold ministry. And uh, I, some people believe that, well, some of these are no longer in existence today. And, uh, but I, I believe, my personal opinion, is that all of these are still in, in, in the work today. And uh, I believe that there are still apostles. Amen. They're, now, of course, they're not the 12 apostles, if you want to call them that. But the apostle, there are still great men of God, great preachers of the word of God that are still bringing an impactful and prophetic message to the entire body of Christ. And uh, still in existence today, of course, there are still prophets today. There are still people speaking under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Giving revelation, giving a word from the Lord. It's still in operation today. And evangelists, there's still the work of an evangelist that must be done. Uh, we sometimes, in our context, we think of an evangelist as someone who goes from here and there and this city and that city and holding revival meetings. Well, that's one type of an evangelist. Uh, but really an evangelist, if you study right down to its core, is a soul winner. So really that should be all of us winning souls for the kingdom of God. And then there are pastors and there are teachers. And so we have all of those and that's the fivefold ministry as the Apostle Paul is revealing that to us. God has all, I want to just, I'm going slow today because I want to drive home to every student. Amen. Raise your hand if you're a student. See, some of you, we're all students, right? I tricked some of you. Yeah, you're a student. You know, go ahead, raise your hand. That should be every hand because we are a student. We are, we are to, we're, we're learning. We're being taught, right? So we want to be students for the glory of God. But God has always used men and women, boys and girls to do his work. That's you and I. We are to be used to be a human vessel being used by the Holy Spirit to speak the word, to preach the word, to teach his word, to love other people, right? To, to witness to them, to make a difference in their lives. God has always used men and women, boys and girls to do that. And there is, and it is important to have a good understanding, whether you are a teacher or a student, that encompasses all of us, it's important to understand the relationship between the teacher and the student. It's important. Why? Because when we understand more about this topic, it encourages and empowers, first of all, the teacher to be what God says that you are in his book, but it also increases the learning of all of us students. Are you with me this morning?
To understand what the word says about teachers and what it says about students, it will increase your learning when you really begin to understand, okay, now I see what God, how his plan works out. Again, we're not only talking about high school and elementary areas of teachers and students, but of course, the word is speaking of teachers of the word of God most of all. And so uh, in, in our context, in our church, we have teachers, amen, and preachers of the word. Sometimes that's done on the platform. Oftentimes, maybe more so, is done in the classroom. But it's teaching the word of God and speaking the word of God. And this will help us here. And, uh, and we, have pa- we have a pastor. Uh, I don't know who he is. I'm not sure if he showed up the church this morning. But we have a pastor of the church. I thought I told a funny joke, but sometimes they're not funny. But being a student is closely related to being a disciple, right? Disciples in the gospel, they often would call Jesus rabbi or teacher. Uh, Nicodemus, when he goes to Jesus, he calls him rabbi, right? He calls him teacher in that conversation that he has. And others called him teacher as well. And we often say the word disciple, right? The word disciple, it's another way of saying a a disciplined follower of Jesus. So to, to be a disciplined follower of Jesus, we must learn about Jesus, It would be very difficult to be a disciplined follower of Jesus without learning more about him. It's hard to say that I'm a disciple of Christ and I know very little of him. And uh, it's more than just being a follower of Christ, but it is to be a disciplined follower of Christ. And so to learn about him and learn what he desires of me, getting the word of God and applying that to my life, that is very important that I grow in the, in the fact that I need to grow to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so you say, what does that have to do with teachers? Well, the teachers are the ones that are teaching us. When we sit in Brother Wayne Gerald's class and in our classes out here on Wednesday nights on normally and we are going through that, uh, we are all the students, though we get involved in the class. He lets us talk about it. And, uh, but he sits in front and he says, I am the, he, he's giving us, he's teaching us the word of God. And so God is using him and giving him things to say that are going to benefit you and I spiritual growth. And so it's so important to know how this relationship works. We are disciples of Christ. And to be a disciplined follower of Jesus, a Christian teacher helps us to do that. Those that are in our school, amen, thank God we have all of these Pentecostal believers that are going to be in classrooms with so many children from our communities here and they're going to be teaching them the word, they're going to be living the word in front of them, they're going to be loving them and impacting their lives for the glory of God and so uh, and, and making disciples all at the same time. And so this is why we have times of teaching the word, right? In our church, in our school, we are thankful for our discipleship teachers. This is, and also TSS teachers are impacting the Glades community because we have Pentecostal believers teaching the word, praying for their students, and loving them right where they are, knowing more about how God's design for the student and teacher relationship will help us all. Why? We're all students. Every one of us. We are to be students. We are to be learning the word of God. So with all of that in mind, let's look at our text here for a few moments. With that in mind, let's look at what our text said to us there. Uh, Well, first of all, we know that teachers are called by God. They're called by God. God, teachers that are teaching the word in a church setting, teaching a, uh, teaching a classroom in a school setting. This is a calling from God. 
I think it's very unique whoever put it on there first. I'm sure it was Brother and Sister Brewer that had it on the application. They asked our teachers, do you feel like you are called to be in a Christian school? And so that's an important answer. That's an important thing, not just for the school to know, but to know that you are called, whatever your calling is, it's important to know that you have been called by God. Whatever your calling is, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a teacher, whether you are a, a, a musician, wh whatever ministry you have, to know that you have been called by God. Uh, it's not exactly like this, but it's like Sister Jackie gets a phone call and it's from the Lord. He is calling her and saying, hey, I've got a job for you to do. I have a position or I have a thing, a ministry. There's a, there's a place where I have designed you to minister and I'm calling you into that ministry. I'm calling you to perform that. So every pastor, every preacher, every, every worker in the kingdom of God, no matter what your ministry is, and friend, every one of us has a ministry. It's important for you to find that we've all been called. God has called us to do something for Him. And so we're just focusing on teachers this morning, but this is really for everyone. The gifts, and the Bible says, Romans eleven twenty nine. 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. 1 Corinthians 1.26 For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Amen. One more. 1 Corinthians 7.20 Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Call teachers, every every teacher, no matter where you're teaching and what you're teaching, if you're teaching things concerning the Word of God, you have been called by God. Amen. I would throw up a red flag and tell you this. Amen. If you're not called into the position and you're doing it anyway, I would encourage you to get out. If you've signed a contract, stick around till May. Then get out. Right, Ms. Jones? <laughs> But that's, that's the importance to know where am I called in the kingdom, wherever you're called, where am I called, and to realize God is the one that's called you there. There are people that are in past, the pastor's position and they have not been called to be a pastor. Even their, their father or their grandfather or somebody nominated them to take over the church. And maybe they, and there are many people filling positions, whether it's pastoring or teaching or other ministries, and they're filling those spots and they are not called to that ministry. I'll, I'll testify to you today, amen, there are a lot of wonderful and glorious things about being a pastor, but I have been through some times where all I had to fall back on was I'm called by God. Could believe it or not, there has been a few days where I didn't want to do it anymore. But I couldn't because God called me, right? Right? I, God has called me, so guess what? When you're called to do something, you don't have a choice. I mean, you have a choice, but you don't have a choice. If you're here this morning and God has been dealing with you about preaching the word of God, amen, and you're called to be a preacher, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. If you're called to be a teacher, amen, you don't have, you, I mean, you can say no, but you'll be outside of the will of God. We really don't have a choice in the matter. God is our he is God, right? And he's called. He, we are called by God to do it. Sunday school teachers, discipleship teachers, pulpit ministry, elementary teacher, high school teacher. When you are called, you don't have a choice. And guess what? Once you are called, you are always called. The calling of God is without repentance. Amen. And so uh, we are always called. God may shift our ministry. God may move us. But we are called to do this particular work. Students, this is important for you to know as well. And that's every one of us. Your teacher is called by God to teach you. That, that's an important part of the relationship, you see. That there that whoever your teacher is in front of you, whether it's in Sunday school or in a pulpit situation like this or wherever, when they are called by God, 
it's important for you to know that the calling doesn't just impact me, the one doing the teaching, but it also impacts us as teach or students because we begin to realize, hey, that person that is teaching me and ministering to me, they are up there doing this because God has chosen them to speak into my life. You see how that shifts the relationship that you may think this is not very spiritual this morning that we're talking about, but this is probably one of the most spiritual messages that I could give to you this morning because when we begin to realize that that preacher, that teacher, that minister that is pouring into my life, God has chosen them specifically to speak into my life for such a time as this. And so it begins to shift some things in our hearts when we begin to realize, hey, my teacher is called by God. Those of you that are going to school on Tuesday, some of you may be going on Monday. Is everybody excited? Brother Mason excited? He's excited. Just look at him. He can't hardly sit still. Hey, Amen. Are you guys over there excited about going back to school? Yeah. Woo yeah. Praise the Lord for Brother Isaac. Amen. Amen. And so when your teachers are there and they're helping you and they're trying to bless you and they're trying to uh, move you forward and learning and doing those type of things, you need to realize, hey, God's put them there in my life. And they're there for a reason. Amen. Secondly, teachers and really all of these five ministries, guess what? You're a gift from God. You are a gift from God. Don't you like that, Miss Davis? You, she just That just hit her. She about shouted back there. That... She is a, you, these teachers, you are a gift from God. Amen. You have been given, you've been called, we just talked about, you've been called by God, and now you have surrendered yourself into God's hand, and now God is giving you to students. Students in our discipleship on Wednesday night. Students in the classroom at our, our schools, our Christian schools. Uh, students in, in, uh, in, in even here in the, we are realized they are called, but God has given, they are gifts that God has given us. Amen, specifically for you and I. Amen, you, did you know that you were a gift to your students? That elevates the status, does it not? That ought to do something. You, you need to realize because sometimes it may just feel like a job. Sometimes it just may feel like, you know, a, 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 some kind of path to get to a paycheck, right? Uh, but most teachers, amen, I know all of ours, they could probably make more money doing something else. Unfortunately, we pay them all that we can, and hopefully we're going to give them all raises uh, next year or 20 years from now. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, we're constantly thinking about that. But you get my point, amen. When you're in a calling, it's not about the money all the time, but it's about God has called me to a specific thing and a specific uh, situation. And so that should elevate your idea to realize, hey, I'm a gift from God. And so that's how I'm going to operate this year. It is important that the teacher give themselves with this knowledge. Did you get that? If you are a gift, then you must... Give yourself away. When you walk into your classroom, amen, and uh, hopefully I'll, I don't have to clarify anymore whether we're talking about school or church. It's all teaching of the Word of God. When you walk into your classroom, you need to realize what God has given you and that moment of what's going to go on, amen. God, it's a gift from God. And so you have to give yourselves to that and you have to give yourselves to your students because you are a gift. It's important that the teacher give themselves. Amen. And it's equally important that the students receive the gift. Students, when you go to school, uh, uh, when we sit in our discipleship classes, it's important that we receive the gift. Receive the giftedness of our teachers. To receive what they have to say. Receive them when they're wanting to help us. Receive even the correction that they give us is vitally important for learning and knowing more about the Lord and growing as a disciple in Jesus Christ to receive this gift of our teachers. And lastly, I'll spend just a few moments on this. Why? It tells us in our text. Why has God called and gifted these ministries to us? Why has God called and gifted these ministries to us as the body of Christ? First of all, he says, for the perfecting of the saints. 
for the perfecting of the saints. I could not help it, but I thought I began to think about this certain perfectionist that I love so much. It's my wife. She is a perfectionist. It kind of gets uh, a little tense sometimes because I'm not. Oh, that looks good enough to me. Oh, no, 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 no. My wife loves Hobby Lobby. Anybody else love Hobby Lobby? Amen. I heard a couple, some grown man the other day was uh, referring to Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna, I won't mention his name. We're going to be praying for him. <laughs> but wasn't too long ago, uh, if you, my, my wife does a beautiful job of decorating, you know, everything has a certain place and all that, and, uh, and, and, and I should have stock in Hobby Lobby because most of the storeroom is on in my house, and uh, not too long ago, my wife, you know, she's wanting everything to be perfect, and I appreciate, I really do appreciate that about her, because she wants everything to be just right, and uh, she told me about just a few months ago that she needed to go to Hobby Lobby and get a few things. I said, um... Why do we have to go back to Hobby Lobby to get some? She says, I'm trying to finish the house. We've lived there for six years. We lived there for six years. When is this house going to be finished? When, it's not going to be finished, is it? Why? Because it's never going to be perfect. And I'm trying, I'm kind of being funny about that, but that's what our teachers are doing. That's what pastor is doing, trying to do in our church. That's what our teachers are trying. That's what the Word of God is trying to do. He's trying that the whole ministry works together for the perfecting of the saints. We're going to make one more trip to Hobby Lobby to get it perfect, right? One more trip to the altar, one more word, and it's continually furnishing, continually building upon us, continually making it. There's removing some things out of my life. There's some putting some things into my life, and there's a per perfecting the saints of God, the believers in Christ. That's why we come to church. If it was not necessary, it wasn't important how we lived, it wasn't important the person that we became, we could just have a drive through church. And the Bible could be like, Front and back of one paper. You know, except Jesus Christ. You know, here, give me $20. You'll take the number two blessing. Bam. Is that slapping with some oil? And they could just keep on going. No, but there's a there's a ministry that goes on of worship, preaching of the word, teaching the word of God, fellowship, all of the different ministries that are taking place, of, and even ministry flowing outside of the four walls of the church, the school, and everything, uh, doing all of, what is that doing? It's perfecting the saints. So those of you that thought you were perfect, you're not quite there yet. God is still working on all of us, and He's working and moving. That's why ministers and, and ministries have been called and gifted for us, for the perfecting of the saints. Number two, it says, for the work of the ministry. To get the saints of God, every one of us, young and not as young, to a place where we spiritually, that we also will be involved in ministry. For the work of the ministry. You are a minister, right? Sister Wanda, you are a minister. Amen. You are a minister, Brother Emmanuel. Every, each and every one. God has called us to do ministry. So I get what I need from pastors and preachers and evangelists. The word of God, the spirit of the Lord is poured inside of me. But not just to fill me up, but that it would also flow out. To be, so I would be in good spiritual condition to be able to minister to others. Amen. Those that are going in classrooms tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning, friend, you need the power of the Holy Spirit, right, to help you with the challenges in, that you'll face this year. Amen. Can I pick on my wife one more time? I haven't done this in like seven years. I haven't. I tried to leave her out of my ministry. And uh, when she was teaching in Bradenton, uh, she had this one child she wasn't quite sure what her issues were. And uh, I think I'm getting this uh, uh, story right. If Don't correct me until later. It's, it's a really good point I'm going to make. She was having some serious issues. She didn't know what was going on with a, a student or two. And uh, you know what she did? She put a little oil on her fingers. And as the kids come by, oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. 
In Jesus' name, come out, you devil. You know, that kind of thing. No. <laughs> but when you're in ministry, when you're in ministry, you lean on God. You lean on the word of the Lord because you can't minister. You may, you know, you may know mathematics backwards and forwards, right? That's one part of it. You may know history and all that. One backward, but to touch a child's life, sometimes to deal with parents, right? You need the power of the Holy Spirit to help you. Because why? Because if you're in, if you're worth your weight in salt, you want to have an impact on their lives and you want to make a difference, and you can't do it on your own. Amen. So it's for the work of the ministry. Amen. Even in our church, we've got to do the same thing. To change this community and to touch people's lives, we have to have the power of the Spirit, the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. And lastly, I'll leave you with this, the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. The edifying, edifying means to build up, to strengthen the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? That's believers. So for the perfecting of the saints, that's God working on us. The work of the ministry, that's God working through us. And the edifying of the body of Christ is to build the kingdom of God. That's the mission. That's the mission. That's the mission of this church. That's the mission of our school. That should be the mission of every Christian on the face of this earth. To build the kingdom of God. Jesus said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus came on a mission. He did not come to make a name for himself. He did not come to make, but he came to die on the cross so that people can be saved. Before he ascended back to the right hand of the Father, he told his disciples, Tarry until you receive the promise of the Spirit and you can have the power of the Holy Ghost and you will be witnesses unto me right here in this local town, right in the suburbs, suburbs and all around that surrounding area and the Spirit of God, the ministry of the Lord, the gospel would be preached, spreading out from place to place. That is the mission of our, our own church and our own school and our lives as individuals. We must be someone concerned with building the kingdom of God. I love that progression. It's coming to light to me even more so speaking to you about it this morning. That perfecting of the saints, that's God working in us. The work of the ministry is that's God working through us and edifying the body of Christ. That is strengthening the body but also adding to the body of Christ. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning and uh, let's just ask God to help us uh, during this time. And uh, will you come and play something for us, Melody? Um, with some of those things in mind, let's, let's pray that God would help us um, with this teacher and student. Lord, because why? Because I want to be a disciple. I sit in classrooms in, this, in our discipleship time. Amen. Because I'm a, I want to be a disciple. I want to learn more. Right? I, want, I want to learn what that word of God says. Even though I've read it many times, I want to know more. I want to learn. I want to become more like Jesus. Why? So I can help other people. So let's pray that God, that the Lord would help us to see this relationship between teacher and student even greater this year so that our school would be stronger than ever this year and that our church even in the areas of discipleship and the preaching of the word would be stronger because it's not only being done but it's being received like never before almighty God we come to you Lord God and pray we honor you and praise you and thank you Lord